What's up, everybody? It's your boy Wes back at you with another video, and we have breaking news. The PBC has just announced Jermail Iron Man Charlo to take on Saul Canelo Alvarez on September 30th. The first undisputed versus undisputed fight in the four belt era for men's boxing. And I just got to say that for the past year, PBC has just been tearing up the competition with their matchmaking. They have made Stephen Fulton versus Inoue, which is happening on the same week as Earl Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford. And now we have for September, Canelo Alvarez, who recently just signed a three-fight deal with PBC, taking on one of their finest, in my opinion, pound-for-pound pound number one fighter right now, Jamel Charlo. And, man, it's, it's crazy. There were so many rumors going around that everybody thought it would be Jamal Charlo, Jamel's twin brother, who would be fighting Canelo. A lot of people, also much like myself, thought that Benavidez, you know, it would be holding out that Canelo would probably sign to fight up Benavidez. But, you know, we got a curveball here. And I'm going to be honest, I think this I think this fight's better than both of them. I'm going to be real. I think this fight's better than both of them. Um, I've been, you know, singing Jermail Charlo's praises for a long time. I think he's a very underrated fighter. He's undisputed at 154 pounds. He's taken out some of the top guys in his division. When it comes to Canelo Alvarez, you know, it goes without saying he's one of the biggest name, if not the biggest name in the sport of boxing right now, probably second to only Gervonta Tank Davis. And maybe you can throw like Errol Spence or Deontay Wilder in there above him. But, you know, Canelo, he's one of the most active fighters. He's a name you hear all the time. And, you know, a lot of people think that he's the face of boxing. So this is huge to me. This is huge. You're going to hear a lot of people that say, well, Oh, Jamel Charlo, he's coming up 14 pounds to fight Canelo Alvarez and blah, blah, blah. And that, you know, Canelo Alvarez is taking on a fight with the latter guy. And, oh, he should have fought his other brother. And in my opinion, all that is wrong because, for one, Jamal Charlo, you know, he's been out for about three years. Didn't look great in his last fight against Montial. You know, if, he, if Canelo would have came back and fought Jamal Charlo, over a Benavidez who's in his weight class that's been ready, who's the number one contender for the longest and been calling him out, I think that would have been a, a lame duck move. But, you know, Jermail, he's riding a lot of wave of momentum. You know, he's been out for about a year, but still, he's the undisputed champion. Like I said, he's already cleaned out his division, and he's easily top five fighter on the planet right now. So, you know, I think this is a great fight. I love the announcement. Um, and this is a fight I'm very excited to see. Now, I know everybody wants to know who I think is going to win, but, you know, before I just go in and say what I think is going to happen, I'm going to just go into the advantages, you know, going for each guy. So, in my opinion, uh, like I said earlier, you know, Jamel Charlo, he's not accumulated to the weight class at 168. So, obviously, you know, Canelo's coming in more naturally used to the weight class because he's the champ there. He's been fighting there for much longer. Like I said, Jamel is still coming off a year layoff, recovering from a broken hand. So, you know, coming into a new weight class, broken hand against the champion, you know, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty big disadvantage. You know, um, coming in for the weight class, you haven't really got the chance to test out, make sure your power is still there, going against a tough fighter who everybody knows is a tough fighter. And yeah, it's just a big, you know, big step up in competition as well as weight. On Jamel Charlo's side, I feel like, you know, even though he is coming up 14 pounds, remember everybody, everybody was saying, you know, Jamal Charlo should be fighting Canelo Alvarez. Well, guys, they are twin brothers. They are literally genetically have the exact same genetics. They're made up the exact same way. Naturally, Jermel Charlo is a bigger guy. I know Canelo has been at the weight longer, like I just said, and probably walks around a little bit heavier. But Jermel is a whole two inches taller than the guy. He's bigger, he's longer, and, you know, his natural weight is probably closer to 168 than Canelo Alvarez's is. 
So I don't really see size being a crazy huge factor. When it comes to in the ring, I feel like Jamel Charlo has way better lateral movement. He's a guy who can be on his bicycle for an entire fight. And he's got great punching power off the back foot and going forward. Canelo Alvarez, he's a good, strong puncher, solid pressure fighter. But I just feel like he fights very flat-footed. And, you know, he loses. He, he starts off the fight real strong. Those first four rounds against the Canelo are usually hell for any fighter going against him. And But I just feel like around the later rounds, like, you know, eight, nine, he starts to gas out. And I think against a guy like Jamel Charlo, that can be a huge disadvantage for him. Huge disadvantage for him. Um, you know, Jamel Charlo, in my opinion, has one of the best coaches in the world, Derek James. Not saying that he can go out there and fight for him. But if you look at Derek James' resume with the fighters he has, he has undisputed Jamel Charlo. He's got Errol Spence, who is the unified champion at welterweight, fighting Terrence Crawford for undisputed. He's got one of the top prospects at 135. Top contenders, actually, not even a prospect, like a top five fighter at 135 and Frank Martin, who hasn't got the opportunity to fight for a championship yet, but I'm pretty sure will very soon. So, I mean, look, Derek James has his, his resume speaks for itself. He's able to make great game plans against great fighters and his guys have been either collecting belts or climbing up in the ranks fastly. So Jamel's got a lot going for him. People saying that the weight is too much and I just don't see why he would, you know, he's moving up so many pounds to go and fight. But these are the same people that, you know, saying that they want old school boxing back. I mean, this is just the best guy moving up in weight to fight another one of the best guys. I mean, a new way is doing it with Fulton, basically. He, he may not be going up 14 pounds, but the guy started at like, what, 108 pounds and he's moving up to 122 now. So he's basically moved up about 12 pounds. Back in the day, we saw Manny Pacquiao fight through eight different weight divisions. So, I mean, that's another example there, and he did it very successfully. Roberto Duran literally moved up and fought guys like Marvin Hagler and Hitman Hearns and went 12 rounds with the middleweight champion Marvin Hagler. And you got people complaining Jamel Charlo's moving up 14 pounds when, like I said, naturally he's a bigger guy than Canelo Alvarez is anyway. It isn't like he's moving up to fight Alexander Usyk at cruiserweight or something like that, or even someone like Arthur Better Be at 175. He's moving up to fight a guy who's fought in the same weight class as him around the same time. Him and Canelo were both at 154 at the exact same time for a while, and Jamel Charlo was calling him out then, and he just called him out recently, and Canelo has taken on the challenge, and I am all for it. I think it's a great fight. And I'm going to be honest, it's a 50-50 fight. Both guys are tough. Both guys most likely are going to the Hall of Fame when they retire. But I think Jamel Charlo has the goods to beat Canelo Alvarez. Like I said, I feel like Canelo struggles against guys with great lateral movement. We've seen it against, obviously, Floyd Mayweather when he lost to Floyd. We saw it against Laura. You know, a lot of people felt that Canelo lost that fight against Ares Landry Laura when they fought. I thought it was pretty close. Probably could have went either way. I could see the argument for Laura. And even against Caleb Plant, a lot of people felt like Caleb Plant was outboxing Canelo until eventually Canelo caught him in, I believe it was like the 10th or 11th round and was able to knock him out. And everybody knows Caleb Plant, you know, he doesn't really have the, the pop there to keep Canelo off of him and keep him at bay. And I think defensively, Jamel Charlo's, you know, even better than Caleb Plant is. I feel like he gives people different looks. And he's got a lot more power, and I don't think Canelo is just going to be able to run through the shots that he ran through against Caleb Plant. And not only that, you know, Canelo's coming off not the best performance against John Ryder, who I feel is not really a A-level fighter like Jamel Charlo is. Now, will Canelo probably be in much better shape and up his game for a fight like this? I believe so. But if last performance is a tell, and we only go by what we've seen last, Jamel was at his A game and put on a hell of a performance, stopped a good fighter in Brian Castaño. And, you know, last couple of, actually the last couple of performances, Canelo hasn't looked too good. His, his fight against Triple G, 
Like I said, he gassed out against an old Triple G in the final rounds and was on his back foot in like the last five rounds of that fight, last four or five rounds of that fight. And he just, you know, had a little struggle with John Ryder, who I really don't think is on the level of a guy like Jamel Charlo. So ultimately, I can see the final score being like 115, uh, 113 on two of the judges' scorecards for Jamel and 115, 113 on one of the judges' scorecards for Canelo Alvarez. I know it's real hard to win a decision against Canelo Alvarez. We've seen some, you know, atrocious scorecards. You know, a lot of people look at the Triple G fight, and like I said, people felt like Canelo lost against Laura. Even the Floyd Mayweather fight, when Canelo clearly lost every single round, one judge had him winning. And then you look at the Bivol fight, they gave Canelo like the first four rounds, even though clearly Bivol won that round from bell to bell, every single round as well, shut him out. So, Jamel Charlo, he definitely has an uphill battle. But, you know, like we said, he's coming to the PBC side. That is Jamel Charlo's camp. And, you know, the judges haven't been the best lately in all these fights. But, look, man, I'm just, you know, saying it. Imagining integrity is intact for the fight. I got Jamel Charlo winning a split decision initially. Closer as the fight goes, my opinion may change. You know, developments in camp always happen. You hear things. You hear about guys, you know, having issues here, having issues there. But we shall see. For now, that is my opinion. If you made it this far, appreciate you for watching the video. Make sure you hit that like. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you get all the notifications every time I drop a video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any news on sports this year. This is your boy Wes, First Degree Sports, and I'm out. Peace.